Kevin Cross and Jalen Forbes, an all-conference player a year ago, also James and Spencer. Yeah, just a good lineup. I like James, too. He's quiet but strong and tall. Uh, and, of course, Forbes is just a veteran. So Tulane comes in as they started off non-conference play, three games below 500. They had a 21-day break themselves due to COVID and came back after that break and defeated Memphis. They have shot the three well lately, but they missed their first hoist from beyond the arc. Change tonight in the ECU lineup. Brandon Johnson starting for Luigi Debo. He's one of three Pirates not available tonight, still in the COVID protocols for Joe Dooley's team. Here's Jackson hitting a three, and if the Pirates are going to have some success tonight against this matchup zone, you have to hit that shot on the weak side. And Jackson can do that, and you can't leave him that way wide open. You know he's that good. Forbes went to sleep on it. He's, Forbes is a great player, and Spencer, they both went to sleep on it. Coming into this one before the two-week break, Jackson was averaging nearly 16 a game and shooting 48% from the floor. Good quick pass up and in for Forbes. Yeah, Forbes is a real deal, and I, and I like the way he plays, just solid and confident. This should be a game of threes. If you can outscore them on the three ball, you've got a shot tonight. The matchup zone's got to be tough for Tulane. Newton, J.J. Miles, who they just got back. Feeds it to Johnson, who's been impressive. Little give and go underneath. Johnson inside. Nice job against it now. Can you, if you're ECU, can you stop this basketball team offensively with Cook at the point? He's just so good. Johnson, real impressive as a freshman. A lot of bounce. He's a junior college transfer. <laughs> and inside, working it in, is Kevin Cross making his... 11th start of the season here, he gets his first deuce. Yeah, both both mirrors, both offensive ends, a three and then an inside bucket. And both teams playing hard right now. By the way, Cross, 57% from the floor, leads the American. If you're ECU, you, get, you find the gap, the belly of the zone, and then work it, and that's what they're doing. That's really good play. Newton, head of the circle. Bounds out, picked up by Suggs. Fresh 20 for the Pirates. Miles, the quick trigger off the wing. And the rebound snatched out of the air by Cook. Two open looks just didn't knock them down. And again, uh, I, what I like about this uh, team from Tulane, they really can go after you at different places on the floor. Now Cross in the paint, left it short. Good defense to bother him just enough by Brandon Johnson. Tie game here early. As it's the Pirates in Greenway for the 32nd time. What you do against this zone, you can you can get open looks, but you've got to move the basketball. As you see, J.J. Miles hit the short jumper. You can get it by dribble penetration on both ends of the floor, both teams. Miles was out here more than two hours before the game hoisting jumpers, trying to get a rhythm going, and he splashes that one from 15, little chip shot. Pirates have taken the two-point edge here early. Green Wave back-to-back -back road games after beating Cincinnati 68-60 over the weekend. And they'll turn the basketball over. Nice feed ahead. Tracked down by Suggs. He'll lay it in. Great play by Jackson against a very good uh, and great play also by Suggs. Suggs has got this. Bama. He's, guard he's guarding Forbes, and it's a big deal. When he can handle Forbes, he's going to be tough. The drive, James will dish it. Now here's Cross, tough step, left it short. And Tulane, driving a lot early against these Pirates. Oh, tough catch, but a foul. That was a good look up the floor. And it's gonna yield an opportunity at the line now for Suggs. And that time down transition, that's what drives Hunter crazy. It, that'll drive you nuts to beat you down the floor for a layup. And uh, Coach Hunter didn't like that at all. Forbes picked up the foul. That was a really good look ahead, though. Oh, a really good look. He, and uh, Hunter's up. He saw something he didn't like. And he's saying he wasn't shooting. Yeah, he was shooting. <laughs> but he's arguing it right now. I'm a big fan of the casual look, and I think Ron Hunter has won the casual look contest. That jacket is pure sweetness for him. That is that's a great jacket he's got on. Well, he's just a great coach, too. I, I, I like this coaching staff. Uh, 
from Tulane. It's just a good group of men that are, they're ball coaches. They understand it, they understand kids, and they're a lot of fun to watch coach. Joe Dooley's the same way. He, he, they're gym rats. They love the game, and they're going to give you everything they've got. Hunter's had this staff with him from the Georgia State days as Suggs hits them both. Yeah, I, I, I worked the game with Georgia State when his son was there and, and beat ECU and RJ, and he was so pretty to watch. And they, they went on in the tournament and did a good job. And Ron Hunter, part of the main reason why it all happens. He's a really good coach. Pirates have checked into the lineup. Freshman RJ. Dude, right there. You got to have help on him. 20 points per game. The freshman transfer from LSU, second in the American in scoring. And here's Robinson White. Bring it across. Newton remains out there, as we mentioned, the third leading scorer at under 18 a game. This is R.J. Felton, a real athletic freshman for Joe Dooley's team. He gets the ball in an area of that zone where you can't bring it down. He did. He's in trouble as he picks it back up. Shot clock dwindling to six. Here's Mosher, and he'll give the ball up to Newton. Mosher inside. Good offensive rebound. The reset. Jackson for three. Yeah, Masher nice battling job. again. Got a hand on it. Jackson, the pump fake. Got hat hit on the arm. No call. And Tulane boards the miss. Nice job by Masher. He's not been playing a lot, but a really good play by the young guy, the young freshman. You look at Tulane, and even though they are shooting the three ball really well right now during a four-game stretch and during the stretch where they've gone two and zero, oh, they are not a great rebounding team. They are no. near the bottom in the NCAA in rebounding, tenth in the American. And really lucky to get away with one. I, listen, I thought J Jackson had the three, and he's almost automatic. He's so good at shooting the three ball. Mosher. Nice feed. Got it to the cutting. Robinson White who laid it in. Nice job by Mosher. Good shot by Tremont. And again, the defensive matchups are beautiful right now. Pirates getting some early points in the paint against this two-lane green wave matchup zone. They were outscored almost wow. two to one points in the paint against Cincinnati despite the win. Jalen Cook with his first field goal. It's a trifecta. And Jalen Cook took a tremendous shot on great defense by Tristan. I mean, Tremont Robinson. I mean, it's just tremendous defense. Jackson, the transfer from Arkansas. Step back jumper. There's Newton crashing the board. And that's going to be a foul on James, I believe, for Tulane. Hey, let me tell you something. Tristan Newton for East Carolina can do things that you just say, my goodness. And that rebound right there was one of them. Joe Do -Do Dooley doing the right thing. You're in a COVID situation. Kids have not been able to practice the way they want to. Their energy levels, and he's getting kids in and out. Never, never underestimate what Joe Dooley does with his ball club. J.J. Miles has returned to the lineup. Quentin Scott, number 15, a senior who's just kind of returned to the two-lane lineup, is in the game. Spencer back on for the green wave. Miles passing up a three. Dangerous pass. On the cut, nice feed to Johnson, who's checked back in, and he'll lay it in. ECU inside passing game's been really special tonight. But again, it's early in the game. You're playing a really good ball club. Can you stop Cook? He is a man among men. I'm telling you, he's special. Cook, 48% from the floor and from deep. And there's another guy who could fill yes. it up. And that's Jalen Forbes. You know what's interesting about Forbes' side? He has really deferred in a way to Cook. They were AAU teammates. They're really good friends. That's going to be J.J. Miles, by the way, on the foul up top. That's the second Pirate team foul. But it really speaks a lot about what kind of team guy Forbes is. Yeah. Because he was all coming back thinking, I'm going to be the man. But you get... Cook in the transfer portal, and he's deferred to him. Yeah, he was all conference last year in this league, and yet he understands. And, and look, and it doesn't make any difference. They're all blending so well. No complaints. It's a confident Tulane team, okay. and right now this is a tough matchup for Robinson and White. And that's his second. Now, what are you going to do if you're Joe Dooley? That's Tristan's second, and guarding him well. All three possessions. Watch him dribble drive to crossover, and he comes in and he gets him on the wrist, but not a bad foul. I mean, it was really a, a tough situation. Uh, uh, let's see how long Joe Dooley will stay with him. That's his second. How long can you ride it out here? We'll see what happens. 74% coming in. He's in the top 10 in the American in free throws, but he missed that toss. And you have to take him out, and that's a shame. Tristan will come back in, Tristan Newton. So you got good guard play, but Tremont's the best on-the-ball defender against a guy like Cook, but nobody's been able to stop Cook this year. 
He's got six here. 20 points against Cincinnati last time. 25 against Memphis. Get it up the floor. You're gonna... And it's going to be picked up by the Pirates. Are they going to get it across? They do. They just do. Good feet ahead. Johnson hanging out under the basket again. Nice and B.J.'s shot. got three field goals. Nice shot by Brandon Suggs to have the sense of the clock and get over. And a good finish by Brandon Johnson. Cook. Tried to bounce it inside between the wickets. Turnover. Pirates with numbers if they hurry, but it was poked away from behind. Good hustle by Jalen Forbes. He himself a transfer out of the SEC from Alabama. You know, the thing is, too, you, you can say how old these kids are, but they played, you know, they get a COVID year. They played at Alabama. They played at LSU. And, and a lot of other kids on this ball club from, from Tulane are veteran players. And then when they get to that upperclassman size, they know where they are, who they are, and they're very difficult. Same thing with ECU. Number 20, Devin Baker has checked in. By the way, James is back in. But Baker, out of UNC Asheville, where he scored a ton of points in the Big South yeah. for UNC Asheville's Bulldogs. Team. Listen, he had 60 games that were double-figure games at UNC Asheville. He played 70, yeah. Yeah, out of, and, he, and, he played, and he had 60 double-figure games. Felton, nice drive, finger roll, swatted away. And it's going to be a foul on Johnson buying for the loose ball. Brian Dorsey, Brian O'Connell, and Courtney Green are our officials tonight. That's the fourth on the Pirates. Yeah, and, and he's the one guy that if you get in foul trouble, you could be in trouble. Johnson. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't have a lot of size tonight, and that could affect their ball play. And now you're in a 2-2-1. He's the back man of this. He's protecting the bucket. So it's a like time you attack it until they go man. Sion James, a freshman from Sugar Hill, Georgia. Okay, ECU is playing a little bit of 2-3 zone. Look for Forbes and Cook. They're the shooters. Left it short. Nice job to run the floor again. Suggs up and in. Yeah, transition game right now. Costing Tulane some easy buckets. Going to stay zone again, see what happens. Joe doesn't usually like Joe Dooley doesn't, but he's got to do it with foul situations. They find a hole underneath. Tough shot inside, miss. Suggs couldn't hang on. It'll stay with Tulane. Pirates with a six-point advantage here at home. First time they're on the floor in 15 days. Not showing any rust as far as getting out, executing, and running on the break. The Pirates are 8-0 here at home this year, their best start in 20-some-odd seasons. And last time out, 15 days ago, beat Southern Miss, rallied with seven and a half minutes to go, outscored Southern Miss by 10, won the game by one. Yeah, just, took, you know, Tristan Newton turned it, took it on his shoulders, did a great job. Uh, and listen, to not, you know, won six games in November is a big deal for this East Carolina time. First time since 2013. But uh, on the stat sheets, it, 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 what, what's unbelievable is what ECU's done. Listen, eight field goals on eight assists. Now, that's an unbelievable stat for ECU. Eight, that's on anybody. Eight field goals on eight assists. 53% from the floor early, 10% above their season average. Here is checking into the game, Jaden Coleman missing for three, a freshman for Tulane averaging five points. Newton in the game for the Pirates to Suggs. Now to Vance Jackson, nice head fake, good pass, open shot, Newton for three. Goes after it, chases it down, but couldn't grab onto it. Oh man, I hope he's okay, he hit his head. And he comes up a little woozy, and Tulane with some numbers. They'll take a three and make it up and in by Baker. Baker can do that, I mean, he's a really good player. I hope uh, Tristan's all right. That's a, that's, see, that's a big play. That's a three-point turnaround. I mean, a five-point turnaround. You've got the rebound, lose it, and uh, hit your head. Then you're going four on five. Baker only his third make for the season from behind the arc, but his 99th of his career. Yeah. Si, it, UNC Asheville, he averaged 16 a game. On the other end, speaking of guys that can fill it up, Vance Jackson hits his second three. 
That's and a big the 206th of his career. Big answer for ECU. Arkansas, Yukon, New Mexico is where he's played a big recruit out of Southern California many, many years ago. Pirates up six. Oh, pretty bounce pass in the finish. No ill effects there for Newton. Great Bring it pass. in for his first. And nice score. job by Jackson on transition to get back. I mean, he did a really good job just then. Coleman cut off, and he'll deliver it now out to James. Inside they go to Cross. Here's Baker in the paint, elevates off the back iron. And Suggs Four. keeping it alive, taken off the floor by Brandon Johnson with the leading rebound in the American. Here's a three, Jackson. Yes! And reschedule the game. Joe Dooley talked this week about rescheduling their first conference road game against USF later in the year, the Wichita State game, yeah. which was going to be played a week ago here. Wichita was in town, and the game just a few hours before was postponed and that's cook laying it in well and, and i think it all comes back to the conference office will make the rule on it pirates have hit three in a row tough shot for Suggs, and that's jj miles getting in there and digging it out yeah i think I, I really like what they're doing they're trying to get these games in and yet keep kids safe and that's the most important thing noble days the sophomore out of wisconsin 6'9", 220 pounder called for the reach in. Now the key will be for ECU, can Johnson stay out of foul trouble inside? He's got one, there's nine to go. And uh, that's the third two lane foul. And that's gonna go against Forbes and yeah. be his second. Yeah, he was, he was grabbing the cutter. He doesn't like the call. And then so that's what can happen. Now he's got two. Now what do you do if you're Hunter? He's a, he's a great player. Yeah. Do you pull him? Coach Hunter shed that really nifty jacket. Two really good basketball lifer coaches here. Oh. And Joe Dooley and Ron Hunter. And Jackson was expecting Miles to cut to the corner and he threw it away. Exactly. He was anticipating the cut. Pirates have taken pretty good care of the basketball so far here tonight. Both teams really have just two turnovers apiece. Yeah, it's been a really pretty game to watch. Uh, and, and both teams are solid. Pirates with a nine-point edge. Si, they've had double-digit leads in two of their three losses yeah. this year as ECU. So this has been a problem area for Joe Dooley's bunch when they do build a lead, adding to it. And that's Jackson clearing the miss. Jackson's just getting better and better every week right, for ECU. I mean, he just is. He's playing really special. So I'm going to have you get the clipboard out here as that shot is up and drops in. When you're going against this matchup zone, there are holes in it. The Pirates have done a good job so far yeah, working against you, it. You penetrate it, you keep looking for the open shot, and you've got to hit the open shots against the matchup. 11-point lead, kick to the corner. Forbes didn't take the three. Instead, gave yep. it up to Coleman, gets it back. Great defense. He'll now take a three and swish it. Wow. And that's great defense by Suggs. I mean, he's all in Forbes' face. Forbes is that good a player. Nice job by Forbes. Second from behind the arc. He's got eight to lead the green wave here early. Jackson to Miles. And that's going to be out of bounds off the Pirates. Thought Tulane might have got a fingertip on it. Well, he's going to come back. Now, Joe Dooley's going to come back with Tremont Robinson. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do, but you've got to be very careful. There's eight minutes to go. Can you get three or four minutes out of him and breathe Tristan Newton? That's what you're trying to do. Here. Johnson out, Felton in. And Robinson White replacing BJ in the lineup. So this is a small lineup for the Pirates, but Joe Dooley with the three posts out tonight due to COVID protocols watch, knew that he would probably watch have to Cook go to take this. It. Watch Cook take him because he knows he's got two. Look, look, look. And he got the steal. That's a big play for Tremont Robinson. Ahead to Miles who jams it in. My gracious. Yeah, took the big guy off <laughs> and knocked it home. Up, up and away. <laughs> wow. But, hey, Tremont set it all up on Cook. He made a big play against a super player. Forbes with the answer, no. Jackson for three. He's the guy that can do that. You let him shoot it. And the house comes down if he makes it. Again, a tough matchup right now. Tremont's guarding the best in the business, I'm telling you. Step back, Cook for three, no. Tipped out, picked up Robinson White. You can't beat what Tremont's done against a great guard. Now the Suggs. Brandon Suggs had a big game last time the Pirates played more than two weeks ago. 11 to break out of a slump. Miles hit it! 
He was fouled. There was some question whether he would play tonight. And J.J. Miles filling it up in transition and filling it up from deep with authority. Hurting somebody's feelings. <laughs> J.J. Miles, opportunity for a four-point play as the Pirates hitting from deep against his zone. Yeah, nice job, a big-time shot. Of course, Jackson can knock it down, and what happens is J.J. gets lost. I mean, it is unbelievable he was that wide open, and the young man knocked it down. Big-time shot. Uh, and, and right now, just doing a job, seven, uh, seven points and Jackson nine. They're just really playing extremely well against a really strong and hot two-lane ball club. Miles has hit three of four from the floor and completes the three-point play, the 68% free thrower. The other thing that you have to look at, I'm telling you, rebounding is a lot of hustle. ECU reading, leaving the rebounding right now, 16 to six. 16 to 6. That's a major deficit in this kind of game. But ECU's playing extremely well. But you know and I know this is a team that's really dangerous. And I'm talking about Tulane. They're, look, you don't win two conference games like they have and can't win ball games. They'll come right back in this thing. You, and you got to keep playing hard if you're ECU. They were out rebounded, was Tulane by nine in the win against Cincinnati on the year they're getting out rebounded by eight per game they throw it away there this is not a great rebounding team Joe Dooley also wanted to complete defensive possessions by securing the miss so far tonight 11 defensive yeah. rebounds for the Pirates no doubt about it they're just doing a good job and they're finding gaps in this zone either inside or outside and they're knocking them down they're making them pay the price Tremont Robinson White small lineup for the Pirates J.J. Miles feeds it to Suggs mid-post. Again, Jackson's wide open. He'll take a three and rattle out. Yeah, he's wide open. They didn't They didn't get out on him. I mean, he, they're lucky that didn't go down. Tulane trying to cut into this largest lead of the night for the Pirates, and there's a way to do it. Silky smooth, Jalen Cook, the reigning conference player of the week, now has 10. He, was, he did that over R.J. Felton, who is just a great player. But this kid is an unbelievable player. He's going to keep him in it. He's just a tremendous athlete. He's composed. He's confident and doing a good job. And really, Tremont, the reason they have this lead, he went two possessions. He had a turnover against Tremont, and then he missed a three-point shot. ECU scored five points at the other end. That's the difference in the ball game so far. Cook into double digits for the... Tenth time. He's now got 11 and is four or five at the strike. Pirates right on their mark. In fact, a little ahead of pace for what they average on the year. Tulane needs to pick things up in this last six minutes. They average 72. But uh, East Carolina has held them so far to just 40 percent from the floor. And it's going to be. Some good hustle by Tulane to come up with it, and they call a timeout. All right, they've used two. I, mean, I know he didn't want to use that, but you get a possession out of it. Early on in the AAC, and it's not every day that you see Tulane at the top of the league standings, but here they are at 2-0 and coming into action here tonight. A lot of people had them kind of left for dead after they started 3-6 and six, and then coming off the COVID layoff. But so far, they and SMU are the unbeaten in the American. Yeah, and, and SMU, Tim Jenkins has got a great ball club. And as you can see, it, it's topsy-turvy right now. But it's early. But give credit to SMU and Tulane for being 2-0. and ECU, this is ECU's first basketball game. Love Penny Hardaway's comments this week talking about how he was the most scrutinized man in Memphis, but they won a big ball game last week where they were not favored at Wichita State. And went in there and really did a good job. And let me tell you something, that coaching staff for Penny Hardaway and Larry Brown is a, le is a legend for a reason. He's a tremendous basketball mind and a great basketball coach. Pirates have led by as many as 14, now up 11. James kicks it out. 
Tried to feed it inside. It'll be another turnover. That is the fifth for the Green Wave. Now, what kills you if you're Ron Hunter? You took a timeout that you didn't want to take because you got a possession, and then you turn it over. It just drives you nuts. That's what makes coaching so hard. Ron Hunter, third year in New Orleans, 28th season overall. Suggs, baseline. Pirates have hit a little bit of a cold spell here on the offensive end. And Tulane's also forcing him to settle for some more jumpers. That's nice going to be an shot. offensive foul. Jackson drew it. And that'll go against Tylen Pope. He's yep. the redshirt freshman out of Franklin's in Louisiana in the game. Yeah, he didn't get the good job by Jackson. Jackson's playing the best basketball he's played and a good call by the If you've got a good crew tonight, you do, you know, when you really look at this ball game, it's just been well called and well played. It's a good basketball game. A little over five minutes to go before the half. East Carolina shooting 54% from the floor. And Suggs is hammered as he takes it into the paint. Good job by Suggs. He's played well tonight. He's had to defend the, always. He's got Forbes. He's done a good job against him. And he's had two fouls called him. I'm talking about Forbes. And give credit. Watch him get in the paint here and get all the big guys up in the air and then get fouled. And, then, and again, I like that you foul them and make them pay. you got to beat them from the line. But a good foul by Tulane because he had the layup. That's Kevin Cross on that one, his first. Suggs comes in number 11 in the American in free throw percentage. 74%, and so far tonight, Suggs is three of three. And a good job. You get Tristan Newton back in, and Tremaine, uh, uh, Tremont Robinson did not pick up a third foul. Nice job by ECU and Joe Dooley. Taking the gamble and it paid off. 2-2-1 two, two, full court press. They'll go back to a zone. Now, can you stop them from hitting a three if you're ECU? Eight for Suggs. Pirates leading by 13. It was led by as many as 14 here. Tulane, yep. after the 2-0 start in the American, their second consecutive road game. You can't lose Forbes. There he is. You can't lose him. It's going to be short. Pirates board the miss. Tulane had come in. Shooting really well over the last four games. 42% from behind the arc, but they're 4 of 11 here tonight. Nice move by the young man, Felton. And a great pass by Tristan Newton. I mean, a big-time pass. R.J. Felton. Cook is wide open. You can't leave him open. Here's a three. Yeah. Yep, and yeah. in. That's like a warm-up jumper if you leave him that open. Yeah, that was not even Cook, but that's Spencer, and he can do the same thing. ECU had gaps on that possession. He's a transfer himself from LaSalle. And he's made over 100 threes in his college basketball career. And that's back-to-back -back buckets now for R.J. Felton. See if he goes. He's going back to the zone. And now let's see. I'm telling you, Cook and Spencer and also they've just got good shooters out there. Lead back up to 14. Nice job by Cross to get his second. Nice job. Both teams. EC's going to the zone to rest people and try to get out of this half without a lot of foul trouble. Felton. Back to back makes for him. Now Newton. Tristan Newton. Drives. In trouble. Tied up. Feel good. Forbes and Cook have 19 of the 29. And still they're uh, losing. So it's a good, good step for ECU. Ball is out of bounds. It's going to go to Tulane. Pirates had cutters going to the basket, yeah. but good active hands by the Green Wave defensively. But this is a good possession for Tulane. They've got offensive guys out there. They score here. They've cut it under. They, you know, they can get right back in the game. It's it, This is a first-half game. Pirates have not had a problem in the opening half. It's been in the second half where they've had a little bit of a malaise, and teams have rallied on them now three times this year they've gotten beat but they did have first half leads in all of those defeats but they've also had other teams come back last time out against Southern Miss had to rally late in that ball game there's a pretty move up and under nice drive by Scott Spencer yeah it's a tough matchup for uh, Jackson he's, he's, he's so quick but Jackson hurts you at the other end he can knock down threes too and he's been hitting the boards great he's got nine seven different Pirates have scored yeah. You see without three of their 
key players tonight who have played a lot, especially to really appreciate the effort that the leagues and the NCAA have gone through so far to even get this many games in. It's been, this is a tough time. Looking back through some notes prior to this, Pirates played Canisius this year to open the season, and Canisius had a 41-day COVID layoff last year. Unbelievable. Nice move up and under. Maybe a couple of extra steps well, I thought he got twice. away with. And Joe Dooley's livid. He's letting the officials have it. And the ball game's down to eight, which is probably about what it needs to be. Both teams playing well. Cross with his six point. Miles in. Johnson over to Jackson. Suggs. He'll take a three. It's up. It's missed and a good board inside by Cross, who averages five and a half. You got to get back hard. Now, now you cut it right now. You can get it really good, but get it to five with a three here. They've hit their last four shots, have the green wave, now make it five. And that's where the size, you don't have big, big guys in there. And that's, a, you know, it's right where it should be. ECU struggling, but they scored 41 points in the half. 8 0 run over the last two plus minutes for the green wave. Pirates have gone over two and a half minutes without a point. Miles. Nice drive. Stays with it on the tip. Batted Just up in the air it. again. And the board collected underneath by Spencer. Now this is where you're dangerous. Watch his speed. Cook barreling in. Oh. Offensive foul. Great job by Suggs. Because I, I really like Cook. I like the way he plays. But Suggs is your best defensive player. And that's a big foul. That is a big foul. Little out of control, one to finish it. And I hope Suggs is all right down there. They're still checking him. Let's see, watch. Watch Suggs get the position. Now watch. He's got the, yeah, he's got him in the chest. That's a charge. That's a good call by the officials. And that's the kind of call that will kill you. Brandon Suggs, 6'6", 180 pounds. He's a sophomore out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Cy, he's maybe 15, 20 pounds away from being a consistent all-conference player the coaching staff yeah leaves. no doubt about it this is where a guy like Jackson and Newton have got to hit a big shot for you Suggs loops it to Miles good feed inside Johnson had position wow. off the window good position by Johnson big time position eight points for him matches his total he had against North Carolina A&T in this building back in December Little give and go work there on the pick and roll. And that's the size. That's where you're getting beat inside. Ten now for Cross, who's reeling them off. Joe Dooley wanted the walk, didn't get it, but this is just the way the half's been. You're up six and you got possession. That's pretty darn good. Pirates have led by as many as 14. Five seconds. Newton fades. Left it short. You, but we also want to see Tulane have that kind of output. Johnson four or five from the field. Starters for both these teams as Tulane extends the point on the defense here just to make the Pirates milk a little time as they start the second half with the basketball. And again, you've got to find Jackson in this thing and he can be really tough on the ball club. But they had the looks and hadn't gotten it. You're down to seven on the shot clock. Beating it inside, and it's going to be a turnover, the seventh of the game for the Pirates. Tulane had seven first-half turnovers themselves. Now, so it continues for Tulane. They, they've gotten it going. Watch for Cross to get real active inside. Big conclusion of the half for Cross to Spencer. And that's going to be another offensive foul against the Green Wave this time. It'll go on James. Yep. He extended it, and you can't do that. Uh, and that's, you know, what, what kills you is you just play great defense, and then you give it up. And that's that's hard. Side the Pirates have had really strong first halves, but they've had a kind of a second half malaise. What do they need to do to avoid it? Well, I think you got to go to your guns, and they got to they got to deliver. Jackson, Tristan Newton, and and uh, Suggs, your, your leadership, and and Miles. I mean, you got guys out there that can finish it. They just got to do it. Minute gone by here in the second. Patrick Johnson, Cy Seymour from Williams Arena, Minji's Coliseum in Greenville, North Carolina. As that's a jumper splashed in off the baseline, J.J. Miles. And it's big to get the first bucket. I mean, instead of a four-point lead, it's an eight-point lead. That's how big that bucket is. Now, Tulane, you said something very interesting in the break as they turn it over here. We'll get back to that after this transition opportunity. Miles, hoist for three, short. The green wave, you said, 
play like a team that expects to win. Yeah, they do. They're very confident right now. That's what you want in your ball club. I think that's what Hunter's done with his ball club. They've gotten to a different level, and that's so important. Cook forced that one a bit. It'll stay with the green wave. So Tulane basketball here. And again, that was a big bucket by ECU. I mean, you know, everything's big this half. I mean, it's a conference game, and both teams are playing well. Cook whips it back out. The Forbes, but they turn the basketball over. Suggs going to take it himself, and the pretty yeah. finish. Boy, a determined drive and a splendid finish by Brandon and Suggs, how, who's got 10. How about him forcing the turnover from Forbes? I mean, he's, he's just played really well. Back-to-back double-figure games for Suggs. Pirates have taken advantage of the Tulane turnovers, and that is up, and that is in. A hoop and some harm for Sion James on his first score. Yeah, I like Sion James, and it's, it's, he's too good a player not to get him. J.J. Miles on the guard, and, and just good dribble, drive, and finish. And a good big-time play by James. And it's after you had the lead and you were moving a little bit if you were East Carolina, but they answer the question, and that's what, that's what good teams do. They never get out of it. James just 59% from three at a high against Memphis of 14. Five assists to go along with it in their win against the Tigers, which, in all fairness, Memphis was without three of their top players. Well, you didn't have Williams in there, nor the two freshmen that could be draft picks. And Williams is their best player. I mean, they were really missing tremendous players. Well, you don't put asterisks by these things. No, you? no, you don't. You just try to win and move on. Nice cut. Suggs blew the bunny, tried to tip it in and did not. I don't think he realized how open he was. No, he had it made. Oh. Cook. Ball deflected. Newton had it, lost it. How about the foul at midcourt? No foul call in the layup. Cook, the beneficiary, has 13. That's a tough break for East Carolina. A lot of contact there on both ends. And Tulane hanging tough, got it down to four. Johnson inside. Makes a quick move up, left it short. And the good rebound inside. He just got kind of muscled off his well, spot there all, by Cross. It all goes back to the Suggs miss on the layup. He had it, and now, now the momentum has shifted. And what, look out, this could change any, at any point right now. Back to the basket, Cross here, but he'll whip it out to James. And James taking it to the hoop one time on a three-point play. Here it is again. Cook. Wraps it into the corner. The three is up. It's no good. Pirates tip it out. Chase down. Suggs. And he'll have it deflected away. Nice hustle there to deflect the basketball and prevent the two by Spencer. And uh, Felton's going to come in and play a little defense. J.J.'s going to get a little breather. So JJ. Miles out. And R.J. Felton, who had four points in the first half, played very well on both ends of the floor, checks in. Both teams really going after it. I mean, it's just a good basketball game. 12 minutes for Felton's tonight. Felton tonight. He also has two rebounds. Felton cutting off the wow. baseline and laid it in with a hand in his face. Big pass by Suggs. Good finish by Felton. And you're bringing in Felton to guard James after that layup. That's what Joe, you, you really sub more on defensive plays. Cook on the other end with the lay-in. And you'll see and you'll see Tristan Newton coming. Uh, you'll see uh, Tremont Robinson get in the game. That's that's how it works. Johnson fake the pass. They're in the top 50 percentile in the country. That that's a people don't understand. That's a major statistic. Johnson had 19 rebounds in a game earlier in the year. He's got his ninth point after that make from the foul line on the back end. East Carolina with a two possession lead. James. Great defense on this possession by East Carolina. They're digging in. Cross, tough shot, short. And Jackson just, comes away with the loose basket. Just ball. tremendous defense. He brought in R.J. Felton, and he, he held down Cook on that possession. He couldn't get the ball. Suggs to Johnson. Takes the 17-footer. Comes out into the arms of Cook. And they're going to slow it up, but now Ron Hunter wants him to pick up the pace. And here comes the man that can pick it up. I mean, he's tough. Last out off ECU. Well, I like the shot that Johnson took. I just thought it was early in the shot clock. He had a good open look. He took it, and he hit the back of the rim, thought it was dead, and that's a good shot. Now, can you defend again? Now, R.J. Felton's got cooked this time, and they're doubling him any chance they get. 
Double team shot up and it is in. They made him pay with Ford. Yeah, with Ford. See, that's the problem. You can't double with who's guarding him. You just can't do it. Tulane's got it down to three. Felton out of the corner. And it's going to be on the floor. Bodies flying. Arrow gives it to Tulane. Well, again, it's what I'm saying. Tulane looks like we're not going to lose. I mean, just that's just the way they play. And ECU playing as hard as they can, but you've missed two good open shots. You, you know, you had an open look by Felton. It didn't go in. And then you had an open look by Johnson. It didn't go in. So ECU now, you look up and you pay the price. It's just a good game. I, I, no, no complaints by either team. Newton returns to the floor for ECU. These guards for Tulane, these big three, they log a lot of minutes. There's Forbes, and there to put it in. Nobody put a body on Cross. Well, you had to come over and help out. Nobody pinched on the weak side to rebound, and Joe Dooley's going to take a timeout. The last four possessions have been brutal for Joe Dooley. Tulane has sliced it down to one as Joe Dooley calls the timeout. His Pirates by a skinny point at home. Pirates playing shorthanded tonight. So J.J. Miles, who was a late addition to the lineup, there was some question even yesterday whether or not we would see him in this game this evening. He's come out, scored 10 points, and he's done it on a couple of short jumpers. He's hit a three in transition. Yeah. And this was a four-point play as he got fouled. Yeah, nice job by J.J. Miles in the first half. And, and, and he did everything, and when you look up, J.J.'s had a great half and a great ball game, 10 points, 4 of 7 on a rebound. But look, when you look at the scoreboard, you played great and you're up one point. East Carolina just 3 of 9 from the floor this half. Bobbled by Robinson White on the cut out to Newton. He'll take the 3 and zeroes it in. That's a big 3, a good timeout by Joe Dooley. But I know where Dooley's worried. He's concerned about the defensive end because this Tulane team is putting on a clinic. Fifth 3 for East Carolina tonight. On the other end, Cook, too strong. Tapped around, should be Pirate basketball, and it ECU is. ECU gets a break there. That could have easily have been Tulane's ball. ECU gets a break. Ron Hunter up, too. <laughs> he is a good coach. Led Uwe Pui and Georgia State to the NCAAs. Three times they took the Georgia State Panthers. And he talked about it. They play in downtown Atlanta and Georgia State on the third floor of the building they play in. And it's going to be a turnover by the Pirates there. They've coughed it up for the eighth time. Yeah, you got to find Forbes. you got to find Cook. I mean, you, you know those guys can eat you up. Green Wave on the night, 51% from the floor. And that's oh. a beneficial miss. Pirates dodged a bullet there if you're ECU. You. Yeah, he had the open look and just couldn't get it to go Caught down. Caught a real break to East Carolina. He's not going to miss many of those. Cross. Right. So Pirate basketball after the double technical. There it is. All day for him. They double Jackson, and it's going to be a block called, and that's going to bring the ire of Ron yeah. Hunter, one would think. That's going to be R.J. Yeah. McGee who's checked in out of Chicago. Well, and it's the right call. He's up on him tight, and he's not giving him room. And see, he, he's, you've got to give him room. And he shouldn't have flopped or he wouldn't have gotten the call. So the Pirates get it back because that's a, another team foul on Tulane, their fifth. Just a couple on the Pirates here. That's Newton off Hold target. On, just, just, just missed. I tell you, when you look at the end of it, it's a four-point lead. And guess who's got the ball? Tulane. Nothing changed for each year. They didn't get anything out of it, is my point. And that's going to be a foul coming out, hedging there on Jackson. That'll be his second. And they're going to call it a little tighter. They're going to get this thing under control. And that's not a bad move by the officials. I'll, it's been a good game. I'm telling you, the officials have called it right. It's been well called and well played, both teams. Well, we talked about Hunter. We showed him a lot there, but a lot of work with Samaritan's feet. Cho yeah. Sh uh, shoes going to kids that don't have them in other nations. and. Coming up in a few weeks, he will coach the game barefoot most of the MLK holiday to raise awareness for that uh, charitable initiative. 
jumper from the foul line. Nice job by McGee to improve his position and stick his first field goal. Yeah, good job. Coach Hunter's called him a pleasant surprise. And he's knifed it down to a two-point affair here. Robinson White takes the three. And now Tulane can either tie with a two or take a lead with a three-point hit. Well, again, look at that split. My goodness gracious. Cook got fouled en route to the hoop. Nice job. By <laughs> That's a heck of a move. He gets fouled, he'll go to the line and tie it up. He'll have an opportunity to do that. On the other side, inside of 12 minutes to go in Greenville, Tulane can tie up the line when we return. Both these programs have really upgraded their rosters with the portal, but Tulane, especially the transfer from LSU, Jalen Cook, 25 against Memphis in the conference opener, 20 on the road last time out against Cincinnati in the upset win in the Queen City, and now Tulane off to the 2-0 start. They have a chance to tie with Cook going to the line. He's got 15 here tonight, 5 of 8 from the floor. Joe Dooley says... And he's one of the most efficient players in the conference this year. And you look at what he's done tonight. He's also been a distributor. He was behind two pros last That's year at right. LSU. That's exactly. And he knew what Will Wade had kind of coming in and made a really good decision to transfer to, to Tulane. Cy, he was a three-time, in other words, awarded by three different outlets as Mr. Basketball in Louisiana. And, and he doesn't play like an underclassman. He doesn't play like a freshman or a sophomore. Well, he he averaged 29 and 30 in his junior and senior years of high school. Yeah, he got that one to drop. You know, the sad thing is, and I, and I mean this, it's a shame there are not as many people here tonight. This is a heck of a, this is a high-level, top-notch game in a good league. And it's a shame there are not more, there's not more atmosphere for the Pirates at, at being the home team. Green Wave were down 14 in the first half. They've come back to tie. Pirates need a bucket over two and a half minutes without a point, and that will continue on here as the miss is cleared. In fact, it's now 245 and counting a goose egg for the Pirates on the scoreboard in that span. Well, again, you got to play the defensive end, keep it close, and then you got to start hitting some shots. James looking inside for Cross. Now he'll face, working on Johnson. Hooks it down to James, goes up, scores, and they take a lead. I like James's body. He's strong, physical, great pass inside. Now you're down two, and you've really not had anything going in for you. That's the problem. 6-0 run for the Green Wave to take the lead. As we continue to work our way here in the second half, nearing the halfway point. And a backdoor pass picked off. Nice job by Forbes. Yep. And again, if you're ECU... Uh, you're, you've got a good defensive ball club out there, but the, the, the scoring is really hurting you right now because there's so many different web, weapons on this ball club. And that one rolled in. Now a four-point edge is cross. Makes the Pirates pay. They've turned it over three times in the last three and a half. And again, again, you're missing big guys, and it's, it began to show with about five minutes to go in the first half. Suggs for three, trying to stop the bleeding, though. A lot of one and done now for the Pirates. Yeah. Not a lot of movement on offense. No, and not net knocking down shots. You knocked them down in the first half. In the second half, you're just not hitting them. Pirates have hit just one of their last seven, and they're 29% the second half. That should have been a travel was not called. Yep. So and Cook with 12 seconds on the you shot. Watch him. You, you, he's the guy. But I see Zion can do the same. That's the difference. They've got James blocked by Newton. Ron Hunter wanted a foul. Felton back the other way, gets stripped on the way up. Yep. Cook didn't get over. If he gets over, he gets the charge. He just didn't get over in time, and they'll get the foul called on McGee on the weak side. These are big. See, that's my point. You got a freshman on the line, four points down. These are big shots for R.J. Felton. Three on McGee now. And R.J. Felton. 1,750 points, couple stops in high school. That was his career. Out of Aiken, South Carolina, that's his first miss of the year. He's not been to the foul line a whole lot. And that one, he was able to knock it in. He's got seven. Jackson, after a rest at the technical, comes in. And 
And now some pressure by the Pirates in the backcourt. Tulane is taking a three-point edge here, trailing by 14 in the half, and that's going to be a push-off. That's going to go against Cook. And again, ECU playing it tough. I mean, that's what you have to do. You watch him come in, and he extends that arm. When he does that, that's it. They're right there. That's that's a that's a good call. Kind of a needless foul from Cook because yeah, he had a step on him. He didn't need to do it. He did not need to do it. Pirates nearing five minutes now without a point. Yeah, the ECU just has gone cold. Jackson inside Johnson. Oh, Muscles man. it in. That's He's big. got double digits. That's big for a freshman against this lineup inside. That's a big time play. Out of the triangle, his senior year at Roseville High School, the Cap 8 Player of the Year at Brunswick Community College. And here tonight, 11 and 7. And the Pirates needed some depth on the interior. Three is no good by Tulane. And that was the guy you wanted to take, and he just didn't hit it. East Carolina can take the lead with a hoop. First conference game of the year for the Pirates after a 15-day COVID break. Tulane trying to move to 3-0 for the first time since becoming a member of the American, and that's going to be an offensive foul against Newton. That's all right. Both teams, and I think he got there. I thought it was a good call. Nice job by Cook. Well, you'll see it that Make sure he gets him in the chest, and he did. That's a good call. Officials, right. it's been well called all night long, and that's and you've got to make sure you call it and move on. And a good and a good job by Cook because he gets his fourth if he doesn't. See, that's a, that's taking a chance. Again, ECU gone to the zone, and let's see what they can do out of it. I tell you, Forbes and Cook can really light it up. And Tulane trying to make them pay, and they turn it over. How about that? Well, you can just see the frustration of Coach teams. Hunter. Driving is Suggs, goes up, called the travel. Yep, nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. You get in there and you get up in the air, you're dead. And this game is physical, and I'm telling you, they're cutting you off in the paint. Turnovers on each end, both ones, when they went in the paint, they both turned it over. Pirates just shooting 31% here in this half. They've also turned it over six times in the second. Tulane continues to shoot it well, 50% from the floor. They shot the ball at a dismal rate. Just five field goals made in their win on the road at Cincinnati. Somehow they still came away with their first win at fifth third for the first time since 2015. Yeah. Oh, a steal. Nice anticipation. Tristan Newton goes glass. Scores! Good job, Good job by Newton. And again, if you're, you've got to be frustrated if you're Ron Hunter. I mean, you've got the lead, and you've had chance after chance, and you've thrown it away. And, and so ECU back with the lead, and the crowd gets back in it. Uh-oh. Been a good one here between these two. Here tonight, Pirates with the lead. Johnson finishes with the flush. Nice pass. Great defensive effort at the other end by East Carolina. Crowd back in it now. Can you stay with it? You're up three. Still a lot of time in this game, but you've gotten the lead back. Three-plus minute drought for the Greenies on the road. You go to Cook, you go to your stars. Forbes, Cook, and those, those are the guys. And that's what Joe Dooley said this week, that Brandon Johnson, once things slow down for him, he's really going to take off. Did not really get a chance to spend the summer here, but has uh, really been a guy that... It's provided a great deal of energy. Here's Cook setting his feet, misfired though, and an offensive rebound yeah. for the Green Wave. The zone's good for you and that they miss, but it's bad for you for the rebound. Cook drives. Contact, no call. Well, I, I know he, he's young and he hit the deck, and that's what you do. Watch behind you if you're Brandon Suggs. He'll drive into the paint, had it slapped away, tipped in the air. Nice hands by Tulane again defensively. It's coming away with the basketball was James, but it was. Tapped in and saved by Coleman. Look at Three that. on the other end. And all of a sudden, the green wave have gone cold from the bonus sphere. Yeah, and that's what happened to ECU. Both teams have gone cold. Both are staying in zones. Uh, and who gets the offensive put back like Johnson did a while ago? Who gets the three ball? Who gets hot? And right now, no one is. East Carolina on a 7-0 spurt. 
Now, lead by three. And if they hit a three here and go up six, probably Ron Hunter would take a timeout. That's how, that's how close it can all be. Down to four on the shot timer. Newton hoists. And it hit off, but an offensive rebound. Who else? Brandon Johnson. A fresh 20 for the Pirates here who yeah. work some clock. That's a big, big play. Now, now just say, if you, let's say you get a bucket here. That's going to be a foul reach in on Cook. I still think, Cy, he was frustrated no, on that no call exactly. on the end. And look, frustrated when you don't get the rebound. I mean, that's a big deal. That's only his third. I thought he had two, three, but he doesn't. But now, see, you've got the chance here if you're East Carolina to go up five because of Johnson's rebound. You see, that's how big pos offensive possessions are on rebound. And you got the right guy on the line. Cook's working the official. First free throws for Newton tonight. 87.5%. Stellar from the foul line and that now gives him double digits in 16 consecutive games dating back to last March and that's the guy you want out there I'm telling you if he missed it I'd say he's the guy you want out there if you're East Carolina it's like Cook on the other team or Forbes they're just really special players and the staff the kids around them are the same way they're all good players four in double digits tonight for the Pirates and he missed the back yeah, end in and out good shot is dead on he doesn't usually miss them now, it does go down to when you get under about three, it's turnovers and foul shooting. Can you control the ball if you've got the lead, and can you make free throws? A lot of time left in this game with Cook uh -oh. working it inside. That's Cross drawing contact. Uh, yep, and that's, that, that's what you want, but Cross is a good free throw shooter. You don't let him beat you with the layup. You foul him. Now, can he go down and hit the free throws? He's a good free throw shooter. It's going to be charged on Newton. A little bit of a mouse in the house scenario there. And taking advantage of it was Cross. He's tough. He's physical. Can really get up. Plays hard. And he goes to the line and knocks down the free throw like he could do it in his sleep. Number 10 in the AAC in scoring coming in. Cross. Yeah, they have the three line. guys. Yeah. They have three guys in the top 10. 74% at the line is cross. 16 now. Cross number one from the field in the American. Double digits for the eighth time tonight, the 22nd time in his career. Someone for ECU or Tulane, when you get open, you've got to knock down a three. And neither team has done that. And, and you got to look at Jackson or Tristan Newton or J.J. Miles for East Carolina. ECU with just 18 Whoa. points here in the second half, but they have the lead by two. Step back three, Johnson, short. Yep. And it's collected by Cook. Now James into the front court. And Cook. Well, J.J. cannot lose James. Oh, he split the defenders and laid it in. That's what he does, and you don't have weak side help. He, and you have to stay on shooters. You, it's on Forbes' side. You have to stay on Forbes. You can't, you can't fall off. 19 now for the AAC Player of the Week this week. Don't force it inside. Make the good pass. Inside Jackson, double team. Here's a three out of the corner. It's up and in. Oh, what a big shot. And that's Newton now with 13. Can you get a stop? The, 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 the dribble drive is hard to beat with a team like this. Here's a three on the other <laughs> end, and the answer is up and in. The seventh of the game Forbes. for Tulane, and it's Forbes now who has 14. Yeah, you're looking at machines. I mean, it's just crazy. Forbes is that good. Jackson's that good. Who can stop somebody now? But, but now they're hitting. Sixth tie of the game. A shorthanded Pirate team here tonight. A very confident Tulane team. Suggs tapping. Can't get it tracked down. And the board taken by Jalen Forbes. Tristan Newton hit the big one. Now, like I said, Cook is taking over. He is dribble driving. He's creating stuff. And it's hard to help out. Here he goes. A little bit of a mismatch there. They get out on him. That was 12 from the floor tonight. Only one of four from three, but in 34 minutes, he's got 19 of their points. He and Cross and Cook, or, or rather Forbes, continue to carry them again. 
And again, if you're East Carolina, you're, you're flashing people in the middle. You're looking for open shots. They've run the offense really well tonight. You're patient with it, and you continue to look. You bring the double on Newton, reaches in, has it knocked away. Suggs picks it up to Jackson. First points for the first half for Jackson, no. Yep, and he he's the guy it. that's got to light it up, and he struggled in the second half. Jackson now 0 for his last five from behind the arc. Here's Cook. Jalen Cook off the window, no. Falls into the hands of the uh, two-lane rebounder, and he gets hammered. That's Noble Days crashing the glass. Well, and it's the right thing to do, but guess who set him up? And he's a 37% free throw shooter. Yeah, just three of eight on the year. Days has not scored in this game. But Cook sets it all up. I mean, he could have easily gotten a foul call there. I mean, he, he sets you up. Now, can the young man go to the line and finish? He just plucked his first rebound a moment ago, and he rattles that one out. We stay tied. And again, Jackson's had open looks. He's the kind of guy that's going to make them. He's just missed them down the stretch here. But again, you've got Tristan Newton and other weapons. J.J. Miles, you never know who. Suggs, I mean, they can get it from different people. And Tulane takes the lead. Day's first point. Jumper by Newton, rattled out. And the Pirates have gone cold again. Yeah, and what you do if you're them, you're smart, you get that ball to your man and let him set up the offense. James will back it out. Tulane with a one-point edge. Cook's out of the game. You've got a break here for your ECU. James in trouble. The drive by McGee going to be an offensive foul. How do you have Cook not in the game? He's the one, he's wanting to go in. I'm watching him on the bench. Look at He's up. He's ready to go in the ball game. He said, Coach, <laughs> it's two minutes to go. I, I'm surprised he's not in. Fourth on McGee. Ninth on Tulane because it's player control, no free throws. But on the next common foul by the Green Wave, ECU will shoot two free throws. Inside of two minutes we go. A lot of close games have been played this year in this building for the Pirates who are undefeated at home. That's marked since the 2000-2001 season. Jackson kicks it out. Pirates looking for their first points in about two and a half minutes. They're going to yep. say he was fouled. Yeah. James got him on the, on the fake. He got up. Now you're shooting two. Now you're bringing him back in. And, and you know, he's a great coach. He gave him a breather. He'll get him back in. Plenty of possessions left, and you have the lead. So, you know, in the long run, he did the right thing. You Cook got and Cross, and they stole some seconds. Uh, exactly. It was a good move by Coach Hunter. And never forget Ray McCallum sitting on that bench. He's one of the great coaches in the business. I'm telling you, he was a great college player at Ball State, just a tremendous athlete and a tremendous man, Ray McCallum on that bench. And he was coached at Houston, head coach at Houston, and he was tremendous. He's just a really good, good coach. Yeah, he's had a lot of stops along the way. As we're tied again, 11 now for Brandon Suggs. Here's Joe Dooley, his second turn here in Greenville. And Coach Dooley coming in on this second stint with 95 wins as the ECU head coach, looking for his 210th win as a head coach tonight. And you know what you did, you calmed your kid down, your freshman guard, Cook, is a smart move, crowds in it, but now he's calm, you settled him down. I think it's a good move. Now, ECU goes 2-2-1, two, two, then a 2-3 full court, I mean, 2-3 zone. Can you get the rebound out of it, and can you hope that, that they don't hit the three? And I'm talking about Tulane. Cook has it. Nine on the shot. Cook will drive. Kicks oh, it out. Perfect. Corner three. Perfect. Short. Offensive rebound, though, inside. Cross draws a foul. Can you get the rebound out of it is what I said. Can you get the free rebound out of it? And you did not. And they had the open look and did not hit it. You dodged the bullet, but you didn't get the, the defensive rebound. First on Suggs, ninth on the Pirates, as Cross goes to the line. They'll return home on the Green Wave to take on South Florida. That'll be on ESPNU Saturday. And then a trip to Wichita State a week from tonight. So a really important next couple of games, especially if they can get out of here with a win tonight. Not getting the, uh, the defensive rebound on a missed shot is big. And Cross is a man that gets it. 
He did a nice job on the glass. Double-double for Cross tonight. 11 rebounds and 17 points. Tie ball game at 66 all. All right, so you've got ball and a tie. And I love what they're doing for Tristan Newton. They're setting him up perfect. Jackson out of the corner. They surround him, cut him off, and now Suggs will work the offense. J.J. Miles. He'll drive. Newton takes a peek at the shot clock. Tough shot for him. you got a good man defending you. Fader oh, rolled out. In and out. 42 seconds to go. Tulane has the basketball in a tie game. All right, they're in a man. Watch Cook go to town. They brought Tremont Robinson in to guard Cook. I think that's a great move. And they've got their best defender, Suggs, on the great shooter from Alabama, Forbes. Here it is. Here's the down ball. There's Forbes. He'll take the three. He'll make the three. Wow. Well, that was the... Eight three. They've got two more made tonight than That's ECU. Right. That's how it gets down to it. Now they've gone to a lot taller lineup, and I'm talking about Tulane to stop you. ECU goes for the easy one. Newton on the drive and the thing. Try to go for the steal, and they oh. reach in and they foul Forbes immediately. Yeah, and he's a 71 percent shooter, but he's better than that when the money's on the line. Forbes has not taken a foul shot tonight. Well, he's going to shoot two, and if you're East Carolina. If you're East Carolina, this will determine what you do. You have no timeouts left. Spencer and Days are about to come back in. Of course, he's, a, he's an Alabama transfer, tremendous athlete. Uh, Made his 34th start consecutively tonight. Hit the three to put Tulane up. And now he's hit a free throw to give him a two-point edge. And you're guarding the perimeter. He brought in, he got in long guys that are going to guard the outside. It's a smart move. And J.J. Miles is up because if he hits it, you got to have threes. Forbes hit them both. Yeah. I'm surprised he got the ball that easy. He, I mean, there was no problem with him catching it. you got to deny him if you can. And Cook, and you hope Zion, you just grab him. Go ahead and grab it. 19 for Forbes here tonight. Pirates need a three to tie. They're not going to give you the three. You're going to have to launch one. Like Newton that. for the tie. Hit it! You got to be ready. You got to be ready. That was going nowhere. That's what he does. I mean, Tristan Newton, watch his shot. I mean, this is deep. Look, and hand in his face by Zion. I mean, Zion James. I mean, he had him covered. That's just a big-time shot. There was a brief the moment that James got away from him. Just a half second. A half a second, and he knocks it down. Tristan Newton is just special. He's just special. Look at this shot. Boom. I mean, nothing but net. And look, the same at the other end with Forbes. And there's two seconds left. They got a chance to get this shot off. You must make them catch it foul line down. You cannot let them catch it anywhere on the dead run. They've got time to get down the floor, no problem. Tulane out of timeouts, 71 all. Newton with three three-point shots tonight that he's dropped in, 18 to lead the Pirates. And he's tied the ball game up at 71 and they, apiece. And that tonight marks the yeah. eighth tie of the game. Nice job by the officials, 3.2, they let you know. It's been a good game all night long. Both both teams and ball, all the fish, just been a fun game. Johnson guarding the inbound. 3.2, you guard the ball, that's what you do. You guard the ball, make him throw it crazy. Now you pick that off. It's up in the air, oh it's my caught, goodness. Cross will shoot it, and it will roll out. Oh. weeks if you're ECU, why not get some extra basketball in? Johnson wins the tap, Pirates will control here. As we have free basketball from Greenville. Now, can you get a bucket? Now, I love what they're doing with Tristan Newton. They're setting him up with staggered screens. Jackson's in the corner. You got to keep working hard, and you got to knock down another three. I mean, it's just that really simple. Miles for three, short. And Good Johnson hustle. Trying to chase it down, couldn't get to it. Well, well he is something, isn't he? He really is. He's a, he is a baller, as we say. Again, you had the open shot. J.J. Miles just didn't hit it. I mean, that's the kind of game this is. It's, a, it's a pressure on every shot. So Tulane and East Carolina in overtime here tonight. Pirates had a six-point lead at halftime, and Forbes, who hit a three to break the tie, yeah. strokes the one here. He's got the first field goal of overtime. Yeah, and it was too easy, and of course, you see you missed. They hit, and Forbes had it too easy. Brandon Johnson, big night for him tonight. 
Jackson dribbles in, takes the jumper, and that's his first point since that's the first good. half. He stepped in, took the shot he could take. Now can you get a stop? Pirates have five and double figures here tonight. Well, it's just been a basketball game. I mean, both teams. Forbes has six three points, uh, three point shots he's canned here tonight. He'll drive again and will draw contact. That'll be a foul on Suggs, the second on Brandon Suggs. Well, Suggs is as good as you get defending. I mean, he's the guy, but that's how good this guy's playing. He's just unbelievable. Forbes has hit multiple threes now 18 times in his career. Six of them here tonight, 100 in his career. He had 37 at Cincinnati last season and had seven threes in that game. Yeah, he's that kind of player. And look, you just, when you put him up there, you expect him to make every one. I mean, he's just, he's like Tristan Newton. I mean, he's just a player. He's got 23, perfect at the line. And it's taken that kind of game. And, and, and it's this close. ECU's played well. ECU's played extremely well. Pirates shorthanded here tonight. Yeah. And Forbes will now drop in his 24th marker. Well, you held him. He didn't hit a three. <laughs> He's tough. Brandon Johnson, the pump fake. Kicks it out. Here's Tristan for three again, and he rainbows that one in. Yeah. Now, can, you know, both teams just playing a different level. Both teams are doing what they want to do. And again, Jackson's trying to help out on Cook because he's so good. Newton had tw has 21, had 22 in their win two weeks ago against Southern Miss. James spinning, shooting, and wow. scoring. And that's a tough shot of a Tristan Newton. That was good defense. I'm telling you, James is going to be a big-time player here. And he was last year. He played well last year. Tristan gives the basketball up to Suggs. Newton tied it for the Pirates with a three. He's hit one here to tie it in overtime. Newton right. drawing contact. Pirates last one in overtime game in December of 2020 against UNCW. It's funny how it's working out. Forbes goes to the line for them. Newton goes to the line here. They're automatic from there. They also hit threes. I mean, guys are stepping up, and Cookie is too. He, he, it's just fun to watch. Jackson's hit that inside, too. That was big. Big night for Tristan Newton. 23 here tonight. He had 28 against Davidson earlier in the year. His career best is 30. Yeah, and, and again, now James is taking over. Look at James. Tenth tie. James scores over two Pirates. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's Cook, James. I mean, they've, they've got so many weapons. Now Brandon Johnson. And a reach-in called against Tulane. May not be a bad foul. You put the freshman on the line, but that's going to be on Cook. Wow. And Cook has fouled out. Now that's big. Now that's with 217, that's big. That's a weapon. But if it really, it's a foul, and you shouldn't be fouling him. It's a center 20 feet out. You shouldn't reach in there like that. That's that's the freshman sophomore in it. He won't do that later on. He'll know the foul's more important than than steals. You got a lead and the ball. Big night for Brandon Johnson here tonight. Now can make it a one-point game. Yeah, that foul's big. Now if you hit this one, I mean, still, I know, I know he missed the first one, but you don't have Cook at the point. Johnson one of three at the stripe. A rebound off of a double-double, and he makes the back in. Second overtime game of the year for Tulane. They beat Drexel back in November in OT. Now you put Tremont Robinson on change. He's harder to make the cut on Johnson. James feeds it in the corner. Here's McGee for three. No. Don't know if that's the guy that no. Ron Hunter wanted taking the no, shot. No, no. You want Forbes taking the shot. And they rushed it. Didn't have to. 
Here is Newton high off the window, bank it in. Now you got to get back, you got to defend, and you got to find the two guys, the three, still three guys that can beat you: Cross, James, and Forbes. Six lead change of the night. Here's a three up short. Pirates crash the glass. Brandon Johnson has a double double, and Forbes took it. The right guy. Now take your time, run your offense. They lo I love they run staggered streams to set up Tristan. Newton, pull up 15, splash! Do you take your last time out? Let's see what for. 27 for Tristan Newton, the El Paso kid. And they turn it over. That's a big time play. Still not over, you still got a minute and three to go. And so you take your time and run your offense here. And if you get the good shot, you're in good shape. East Carolina in overtime for the first time this year. Can double, they remain undefeated at home? Double staggered screens, and that's what you do. It's hard, he's so hard to guard, but somebody's gonna get an open look because everybody's going to Tristan Newton. Eight for Newton and here in overtime. Suggs doubled back to Newton long three. Yes. Wow. <laughs> 30 to match his career high Forbes. No pirates the board and who gets the rebound Tristan Newton. Wow. Watch this shot. I mean he's been unbelievable. Unbelievable. He is by Joe Dooley on the bench and knocks that down. I mean, that's crazy. Great job by our crew back, back in the center. They're doing a heck of a job keeping up with this game. It's been one of the best games in Menjus that I've seen. You're beating a team that's 2-0 in this league. And came in with a lot of swagger, a lot of confidence, and made one heck of a comeback to yes. get this I mean, game where they actually yeah. had the lead late. Yeah, but think about Joe Dooley. He's missing three guys. He's just a grinder coach. That's what he does. Now, he he is he that, that bench that all those coaches over there every one of them are really top-notch guys Cy a new career high for Tristan Newton Pirates led by three at the half Tulane has outscored him since intermission but Newton has been the man here in the overtime 88 80 my goodness no threes no threes get them off the line but no threes Here's he a didn't three do head of the circle. No, Tulane's gone cold from there. Newton chases it down, and Tristan going to slow it out. Pirates are going to get their 10th win, and that matches, actually exceeds their win total by two of last year. Well, it's a great win for ECU, and Ron Hunter has got a great year. He knows what he's done. He's